What's up everybody? So, uh, this is uh, this new device that I have not named yet. Finally got it hooked up. I think it's been like three hours, two and a half hours, something like that. And uh, maybe longer than that. So I'm live right now. Uh, the people over at, um, well, rwgresearch.com forward slash JTV. Where is my address? There it is. Okay. JTV.html actually. If you just go to rwgresearch.com, click the live link, you'll see it while I'm there. Got my other PC out here I'm using and my laptop, old piece of junk I'm using for Pulse Fire software. Alright, now this Pulse Fire software is actually running Pulse Fire, which I've pre programmed to do exactly what I liked it to do. And then I've got this device all wired up and connected, and I'll explain to you how that works. And I'm also I'm using build cell. I'm using both gases, not separated. They're separated, then they're recombined. And I'm using that um, with the home built big boy power supply. Okay, so that's my setup. Um, for those of you who have never seen this, I haven't named it yet. So this is the no name device. Maybe that's what I should call it. Not a bad idea. So we'll call this the no name device for the moment. And basically there's two pistons. This piston gets shoved all the way back to the back. This one gets shoved all the way next to it. And pulse fire, I'll show you how I have this programmed. When I hit the fire button manually, both the, the first output come on, then off, and then it fires. It multi-triggers the fire. So I'll do it again here. Fire gas goes in shuts off and fires okay so those I'll show you I've got indicator lights on here so you can see it and I'll do it again there are those two on there's off and then you can actually hear the spark plug every once in a while I'm getting some feedback just like that from my my firing device here which is kind of odd it's triggering itself which is something that uh, the high voltage spike is doing I haven't I've got a suppression diode on here but it's not really helping I might need a couple of them or I might need to add one back here that's okay for now so basically um, I have a solenoid valve here that's bleeding off this hose goes outside Right, it's a vent. So I can run this gas as much as I want in here and not have to worry about this little jobby lighting her up. And um, basically what I'm going to do right this moment, well, I'll explain this a little bit better. Basically the, the gas comes in from my cell over here and then bleeds off all the time. When I'm ready, these two cylinders open at the same time. Gas goes in, fills up the chamber. The first one here shuts off, then that one shuts off just a split second afterwards a couple a little bit of delay fire my spark plug I can adjust everything with pulse fire software here okay it's all on the forums open-source-energy.org let me just show you that right there alright go check it out um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and just light this. This is my quenching disc, if you guys haven't seen it. Well, oh, there's APG. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is just turn this on. Alright, my gas is going to flow. And it may take a second, depending on how much is in that line. But we can probably go ahead and try it. Oh yeah, we're running. So right now I actually have a flame, which you can't see because of how clean this stuff burns. If you want more information on that particular device right there you're looking at, you can go to my website and check it out. Actually, it might not even be there. You probably have to go to the forums or my YouTube right this moment. But there you can see that we have a flame there. It's burning. Go ahead and put that out. And uh, we'll go ahead and shut this 
off. Disconnect this hose. I do have a flashback arrestor in here. Alright, it's a homemade one from uh, Justin over at uh, now you're going to catch me off guard jdcproducts.com um, it's about the only thing I have in my possession that's not open source so <laughs> there you go but uh, let's set this camera up and we'll give this thing a shot alright everyone so right now I'm going to leave these pistons out I have this piece of plexiglass Lexan and stuff just in case that tube explodes because this particular tube is not the finished product. I will have a clear tube here, but I need I need to check the dimensions. So for now, this is what we got. So I'll go ahead, turn the power on. And three, two, one. Start the single. Gas filling, off, and fire! Wow, that was really loud. I'm thinking those pistons are going to be across the room. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. That was awesome. Filling up, and fire. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I think those pistons are going to be in the other freaking dimension. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to set something up there. Here, let's do. Uh... All right, I got a. I got a uh, Pringles can. Okay. I'm gonna just set it about one inch away from that. All right. We might have a new potato gun, huh? <laughs> All right. Starting firing sequence now. Filling up. And shoot. Oh, that wasn't too much. Oh, it's going to go again. Pulse fire is running away. I think it's more loud than it is uh, um, destructive. <laughs> Alright, Pulse fire decided to quit now. So, um, what that means to me is that even though that is extremely loud, there's actually not as much force over here because of my small orifice inside this end. Try this instead. All right. Starting firing singlets now. Yeah, I think that would work. I think that's going to work. I mean, I might need a, a three or four foot tube, but that would give me an even more precise measurement. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this gas off. I'm gonna slide these pistons in there, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna get some measurements here. We're gonna see if this thing shoots out. I'm gonna guess. Everyone's gonna be surprised. It's not gonna shoot out as far as you think. Again, because of that orifice that I put in there originally, which is designed to, to catch the pressure, it's more of an exhaust vent on this side, and that's what I was going for. So. Got everything off of there, so you don't have to worry about anything blowing up. Uh, oh man! Oh, that's fitting real tight because of the. There's no bleed off. All right, so it looks like we're exactly 12 inches from the end of that extra piston in there. So. Here goes nothing! <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, this may blow up. No joke, this tube might go. So I'm going to uh, turn my back. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the gas on. I'm going to go ahead and turn my back. I blind me and peek around the corner maybe. Alright. Three. Two, one, starting sequence now. Filling up, firing. Ah, just as expected. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. It did not blow up, and it did not shoot out. Question is, how far did the piston move? Oh wow, half the tube. I got, I got, I turned pulse fire off. I have a power switch to kill everything. Let's see, I need to bend this down. Ha ha! And you guys thought this thing was going to shoot out. Now what's interesting is the piston is almost all the way back, but the ring is out. The ring is out. Uh, six and three quarters. Six and uh, six and. Uh, was that 15 16? Let me get the good camera out here and show you guys what just happened. Alright. So you can see that in there if it will focus. It's not really going to. There you go. See the room between the two pistons? Alright. That right there was the suction going back and the ring staying where I want it. That's exactly what I want. And to be honest, that's a pretty good distance. That's about exactly what I need. So let's go ahead and fire it a couple more times. Here we go. Pulse fire on. Firing in three, two, one. Start sequence. And fire. Alright. Now I did turn pulse fire off. That time it came out even further. Which again is a very good thing. That one came out five and a half inches. We'll see if I can feel the piston. I don't know if I can. Man, it feels like that piston sucked all the way back, which makes sense because water, when it burns, goes back into its molecule, which is actually creating a small vacuum. Firing again. Three, two, one. Starting sequence now. And fire. Cool the amount of air that comes off that thing. All right, that looks like a five or four and a three quarter. So just a little bit further. So it looks like we're about to that point where we bled all the ambient gases out of the system. Go ahead and fire it again here. Three, two, one, starting sequence. Now that audio, do you hear the audio? That makes a difference. That's what I'd like to record and capture as and it's five and uh, or four and fourteen sixteenths. I want to capture that audio and stick it into an analyzer and find out exactly what we're hearing as well as seeing. This is a this is a great device. It's actually I'm pretty excited right now that things actually do exactly what I want. Fire it again. Here it goes. Alright. So a little bit further that time and four and uh ten, four and ten sixteen. So there you go, everyone. This has been a uh, no name device experiment with uh, hydrogen and oxygen. Now what I'm, a I'm actually trying to do here is uh, determine what different burn rates do different things using the gas gun, using ambient compressed air such as this device down here which I've used in my previous video and also things such as recycled exhaust gases or argon or CO2. I'll be using some argon I think. It'll work the same got my control hydrogen here so we can really see what's going on but to be honest with you this device produces pure hydrogen um, besides a little bit of the uh, electrolyte that comes off of it but there you go before I run out of time because I'm sure I will um, this has been uh, another experiment with Russ and I'll be doing more tonight so look for a couple videos it's going to take me a little while to edit stuff anyway see you guys later peace go check it out rwgresearch.com open-source-energy.org. Those two locations visit for more information. This is Russ. See you.